Toyota Land Cruiser. Over 550,000 Land Cruisers have been imported into Australia since it was first introduced exactly 50 years ago, in 1958. The first Toyota Land Cruiser imported from Japan was the 20 Series. This beautifully restored FJ25 is one of the very first 13 original Land Cruisers which landed on Australian soil in 1958 for the Snowy Mountain Scheme. Land cruiser sales on a continuous basis were begun in Australia by Leslie Thies, later Sir Leslie Thies, founder of one of the largest and most diversified construction, mining and engineering companies in Australia. In the late 50s, Leslie Thies and his brothers were involved in the Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme to construct 16 dams and 7 hydroelectricity stations, which were connected by over 200 kilometres of tunnels and aqueducts. Conditions were hard, particularly in winter. With snow falling almost daily, the dozers and graders had to be sent clear away around the mountains to tow in various equipment, and four-wheel drive was also needed to get workers into the isolated, winter-bound snowy mountains to keep the project on schedule. Well, the Land Cruiser is such an important vehicle for Australia. Like you say, it's, this is its 50th anniversary, which is a terrific achievement for Land Cruiser. It initially came into the country around 1957 at a time when the four-wheel drive scene in Australia was dominated by Land Rovers, old Series 1s and Series 2. Uh, the way it actually came into the country was uh, through Sir, uh, Sir Les uh, Thies, who was an awarded a contract for the uh, Snowy Mountain Scheme in the ACT, and he brought in a number of land cruisers directly from Japan, and Sir Les Thies was the man who did it, and his company Thies Toyota, and he brought a number of vehicles in from Toyota, and uh, they earned their stripes on that project. From there, he saw an opportunity to expand, and he went to Queensland and opened a couple of dealerships there with Toyotas. In 1960, the 20 Series was upgraded to the now classic 40 that sold for the next 24 years. In response to demand from overseas markets, in particular from the United States, the new 40 series had improved highway drivability and comfort. Though there was very little change in the external appearance of the vehicle, production techniques were modernized with new steel presses and the first major structural development was done. This vehicle overcame the prejudice of the inferiority of Japanese products that prevailed at the time and was exported all over the world. Think Land Cruiser, and nine times out of ten, an image of the classic 40 series pops into your head. Popular with recreational four-wheel drivers, farmers, and mining companies, it was the 40 series that built Toyota's reputation for reliability that the Land Cruiser still trades on to this very day. A strong chassis, basic leaf spring suspension, and understressed four- and six-cylinder power plants made the 40 series a tough truck that was easy to service and maintain. It's been the vehicle of choice by government departments, mining companies, um, major civil engineering contractors, and of course it's worked on every major project of, of any size throughout the country. You will have seen land cruisers at work there from the Ord River scheme in Western Australia to the Snowy Mountains and everything in between. They've all had land cruisers. And, In 1969, the FJ55V was introduced into the Australian market. It's a stylish station wagon suitable for even pleasure driving, but with the toughness of the 40 series. Toyota, the company, saw the success of these vehicles and thought, 
we should have a part of the action as well. So they actually bought Thiefs out and Toyota Australia was born with the company owning the distribution rights in the country. In 1971, Thiefs and Toyota agreed to found Thiefs Toyota and headquarters opened in Tarrant Point, Sydney in 1974. In 1980, the FJ55B was replaced by the more luxurious and comfortable 60s series. For a decade it reigned supreme, the vehicle which typified the Australian four-wheel drivers. The 60s series wagon sparked a four-wheel drive boom. In 1984, Land Cruiser's image leader 40 series was finally remodelled into the 70 series. The biggest change in the history of the Land Cruiser. During the three and a half years of development, the prototypes were subjected to intensive outback testing in New South Wales, South Australia and the Northern Territory. The main emphasis was on the suspension. Some prototypes had the Mitsubishi Pajero emblem. In 1990, the 80 series was introduced in Australia, replacing the 60s series with a more luxurious multi-purpose wagon. The transition from the 60 series to the 80 series was more drastic than from the FJ55V to the 60 series. It was more a revolutionary change than an evolutionary one. The 80 series was regarded as much an historic benchmark as the early 40 series. This model, later in 1993, established a world sales record of 1,841 cars in one month in the Australian market. No matter that the 80 series was more comfortable and luxurious to ride in, retaining the well-known durability, reliability and dependable off-road performance, the Land Cruiser 80 series dominated the four-wheel drive market in Australia as king of the road. Aiming to be the most reliable and comfortable prestigious SUV in the world, the new 100 series was launched in 1998. In Australia, only the top spec GXV models were equipped with double wishbone independent front suspension and rack and pinion steering, more passenger car-like constructions, while the other models retained front rigid coil suspension. On November 5, 2007, the latest generation of the Land Cruiser wagon, the new 200 series, was launched in Australia. The new Land Cruiser 200 series has a stronger body, improved suspension and more powerful V8 engines using less fuel and new technology that makes it even more capable in all conditions. えっと、やっぱ50年にわたってですね、ランドクルーザーをですね、あの、オーストラリアでこうたくさんのユーザーの方にご愛いただきまして、まだまだあの、未熟なものですけれども、ここまでやっぱり大きく育てていただいたことと